So far, I've just been executing commands in the command window. This is a really inefficient way to use Octave, especially when you're doing involved multi-step calculations. It's usually easier, for everything except the simplest calculations, to use a script file to execute your command. A script file is just a text file containing a series of commands that are executed as a group. Script files are one of two different kinds of M files. M files contain a sequence of commands, generally called a program, which are executed by Octave. They're called M files because the file extension is an M. There are actually two different kinds of M files, script files, which I'll talk about now, and function files. The main difference between script and function files is that script files use the same workspace that's used when we execute commands at the command prompt. Technically, this is called the base workspace. Function files, however, each have their own workspace, which I'll talk about more in a later video. When you run a script file, the commands in the script file are executed in the order in which they appear in the script file. Since script files use the base workspace, this means that the effect of the commands is exactly as if you had typed and executed them sequentially at the command prompt. So, any variables created by the script file are saved in the base workspace, and all the variables in the workspace are available for the script file to use. This means that you need to be a little bit careful about whether your script file is using any of the same variable names as the variables that are in your workspace. The script file will replace variables in your workspace that have the same name as the variables used by your script file. To use the GUI method of creating a script file, go to File, New, then click New Script. This opens an editor window. Just type the commands that you want to put in your script file in this window. I'll type in a few random commands. For example, var1 equals 3, var2 equals 2, var equals var1 plus var2, and my var equals cos of var. Keep in mind that the commands get executed individually in the order you type them in the script file. So make sure that you don't use a variable in your script file unless it's been defined earlier in the file. Before you can run the script file, it must be saved to disk. You can save the file by clicking on the Save icon here. It gives you a fairly typical window prompting you for a location to save the file and a file name. I'm going to postpone saving the file for a minute though. After you save the file, you can click on the Run menu, followed by either Save and Run or Run Selection, and the file will execute. The Save window provides a default location for saving the file, but it's a good idea to choose for yourself where the file gets saved. If you save everything to the default location, it becomes more difficult to find the exact script file you're looking for later. Keeping your files organized is important. I'll go to the TIM folder on the C drive, create a new folder named Demo1 in that folder, and save the file as My Demo1 in the Demo1 folder. Since the folder I saved this in was created fairly arbitrarily, I get a message that the folder isn't on Octave's path, along with a few options of what to do about this. I could save it to a different folder with the Change Folder option. However, unless I choose a folder that is on Octave's path, I'll just keep getting this message again. Since I don't know offhand of a folder on Octave's path where I want to save the file, I'll choose the Add Directory to Path option. The path is a list of folders where Octave will look for things. Now the folder where I saved my file is in Octave's path, so that Octave can find the file and run it. And since I clicked on the Run button in the first place, it runs immediately after saving. The file name appears in the command window. The script file is now an Octave command, just like any other command I run by typing its name at the command window. And the variables created by the file are in the workspace. 
none of the values of the variables are displayed since I followed all of my commands in the script file with semicolons, which suppresses the display of results. I can, however, view the results of the calculations by typing the variable name and pressing enter. For example, to see the variable var, just type var and press enter. Another way to run the file is to just type the file name at the command prompt. To show this, I'll modify my file slightly. I'll set var to be var1 minus var2, and I'll save the file by clicking on the Save button. Notice that I don't get a dialog box this time since the file has a name and a location that's already on Octave's path. I'll also close the file to show that it doesn't need to be open for me to run it, and I'll clear the workspace. I can check that my variables were cleared by typing who again. Now I can just type my demo one at the command prompt. The file runs and puts my variables in the workspace. I changed the script file so I get a different value for var. When I added the folder containing my file to the path, Octave will automatically look in that folder when asked to execute a command. You can check the Octave's path with the path command. Just type path and press enter. These are all of the places on disk where Octave looks for files when you ask it to execute a command. The folder I added to the path is right at the top of the list. The approach I used here is just fine, but I think that having the editor window add folders to the path is not the most efficient way to work. To show what I mean, I'm going to close Octave and then reopen it. Now I'll run my file by typing my demo one at the command prompt. Now Octave can't find the file. I'll check the path again by typing path. The folder I added to the path in my previous session isn't there anymore. The path got reset when Octave closed. I can reset the path with the add path command but I find this approach to be confusing and kind of irritating. A better way to work is to understand how and in what order Octave looks for files. This information can be used to be a little bit more efficient when saving and running files. When you use a function or a variable, Octave goes through a specific path of locations to look for that function or variable. Knowing this sequence is essential to make sure that Octave is executing the command that you actually want. First, Octave tries to interpret the command as a variable name, and it looks in the workspace for a variable with that name. If it finds a variable with that name, it returns the value associated with the variable. After that, Octave looks for a built-in function whose name matches the command. If a match is found, Octave attempts to execute that function. If neither of the above two conditions is met, Octave looks in the current working folder for a file whose name matches the command. If it finds a match, Octave executes the file. Finally, Octave looks through the rest of the search path, the list of folders from the path command. The search order is the same as the order of the files displayed by the path command. The first time a match is found, Octave stops looking and executes that file. I need to re-emphasize that Octave stops going through this list the first time it finds a match to the command. So if the command matches a variable in the workspace, Octave stops searching for other conditions that could be satisfied and it uses the variable that it thinks you want. Now that we understand the way that Octave searches for stuff, I have a recommendation for how to create and execute script files. When you start a session or a specific problem or assignment, change your current directory folder to something that you want to use as a default folder where files associated with that session will be located. For most people, I think this simplifies the process of creating, loading, and saving files. Remember that the current working directory is the default location where Octave's editor will save files that you create. It will also be the first place that Octave will look for a script file you're trying to execute, assuming you didn't accidentally give your script file the same name as a variable in the workspace or a built-in function. As a bonus, the current directory is also the default location where the load command will look for files to load, and it's the save function's default location where files are saved. 
Now I'll show you how this simplifies the way I create and run a script file. First, I'll set a new working folder. I can do this by clicking on the Browse button up here, navigating to the TIM folder on the C drive, and creating a new folder named Demo2. This folder is now my current working folder. Now I'll create a script file by clicking on the New Script button. I'll put a couple of random commands in the file. Test1 equals 3, Test2 equals 4, and output equals test1 dot times test2. Now when I click save, the save dialog box defaults to the current working directory. Octave knows where this folder is, so I can just give the file a name, test file, and click on save without having to go through the whole process of choosing a location and making sure it's on the path. Then just click Run to run the file. The file executes and the value of output is displayed since I didn't follow that line with a semicolon. I can also run the file by typing the file name in the command window. As I did before, I'll clear the workspace and close the editor and then type test file at the command prompt. Now I'll try closing Octave again and reopening it. If I want to resume my session, I can just set the working folder to the folder I was using before. I can use the Browse button, or usually just select the folder from a list of recently visited folders by clicking on this down arrow. Now my current folder window shows the script file I was using before and I can run the file by typing its name in the command window. I can also edit the file simply by double clicking on it in the current folder window. I'll change the variable test2 to 24, save the file, and rerun the file. I don't like using GUIs for file and folder management because it usually takes me longer to home in on an icon with the mouse than to type a command at the command window. So next, I'll use commands typed at the command prompt to perform these tasks. First, I'll go back to the TIM folder on the C drive. The TIM folder is the parent to the current folder, so I can move to this folder by typing cd space dot dot. Remember that dot dot is the name of the parent folder of the current folder. Now I'll make a folder named demo3 in the TIM folder by typing mkdir demo3. I'll double check that the folder was created correctly by typing ls. Now I can make demo3 my current working folder by typing cd space demo3. I can create a new file named new demo in this folder by typing edit new demo at the command prompt and pressing enter. Yes, I do want to create this file, so I'll click on yes or just press the enter key. The editor opens and I can type my commands in the file. I'll set a variable x equals 4, a variable y equals 7, and calculate a variable z equals x slash y. I won't follow this final command with a semicolon so that something will display when I run the file. Now save the file by clicking Save. Notice that the file has already been given a name by the edit command, so I don't have to deal with that dialog box either. Now to run the file, I just type the file name at the command prompt and press Enter and I didn't have to use the mouse at all except to switch from the editor window to the command window, and I could get around even that with keyboard shortcuts. The next important topic relative to script files is comments. Comments are text which is included in the file but aren't executed. They describe how the code works and document when and why it was created.